Hello. So I am not a designer. I am a developer. And as a front end developer, every time I start a new project, I pretty much run into the exact same problem. And that is what colors should I pick? Now, as you're probably aware, there's a million different people who have tried to build tools for this. And for me, most of them just come down to kind of the same issue. Like most of them are good, but they're just not built for developers. They're built for designers. So probably the most famous example would be something like Adobe Colors. Let's take a look at that first. Now, don't get me wrong. It's really fun to sit here and like spin around all these little things and see what colors it makes. You could like insert your color down here. You could switch to some other color harmony thing and get other outputs. And this is nice, but I have no idea what I would do with all these colors unless I was like building a website for Skittles or something. Coolers is another really, really great example of one that you've probably seen before. Let me bump this up. If you haven't seen coolers before. It looks really pretty. And don't get me wrong, my ADD really likes being able to just hit spacebar and get all these really nice color palettes. But again, I have no idea what I would do with all of these colors. Maybe this would be a good start if I just wanted like a primary color and a secondary or a secondary color. So it's like, cool, these colors seem to go well together. But then what about my background colors and my text colors and like more like semantic colors for like danger and warning and stuff like that that we need as web developers. Now they do have like a palette visualizer thing where you can see something like this, but this is probably not what you're building. You're probably building like a dashboard or something and like, yeah, okay, that looks okay, but that's a lot of colors. And like, it's not really documenting how you're gonna use all those. I guess you could pick out these background colors, but one better version of something like this that I found is real-time colors. Real-time colors is actually by another YouTuber named uh, Juxtaposed. And this is the best tool that I've found for this so far, like by a lot. So you can, you know, as you pick your colors, you can kind of see what they look like on an actual landing page. And this is cool. You can also come up and see what they look like on a dashboard. And it's, it's also all right. Or I shouldn't just say it's all right. It's actually very, very good. I really, really like this tool. And it gives you pretty much everything that you need for, you know, a real website besides a couple of things for me. The main thing is really that it feels a little bit to me more geared for like landing pages. Uh, so like looking at it as something like this is nice, but I don't really feel like it gives me enough states for all these colors. So like if I come down to export, where is that again? Yeah, export, you're seeing it's just gonna give you like one kind of value for text, background, primary, secondary, blah, blah, blah. You can come through and export and all, all different kinds of stuff and that's cool. And you can also add in shades, like for go and CSS or something, you can get different shades of the same colors, but this kind of goes back to the same problem of like, I don't generally know what to do with all these colors. I can guess and kind of figure it out, but it's a little bit hard to keep things looking consistent if it's not like semantically named for me. And it also feels like it's kind of missing some colors. So like if I go back, maybe I'll remove shades. Okay, that's off. Like this isn't giving me like background color I can come in and just pick them out of here, I guess, or I can go and I can look in the shades explorer thing that they have here and kind of figure it out myself. But again, it's not really being done for me. It doesn't have any kind of opinions. I still have to kind of know what I'm doing. And anytime I try and piece all this together, it ends up with a kind of weird result. You know, if I knew what I was doing, this would probably be exactly what I wanted, but I wanted something a little bit more opinionated and a little bit more just drag and drop. So I actually built one. So this tool that we're looking at right here is on my website. It'll be the first link in the description under CSS color palette generator or up here in the nav bar. And my goal with this was to build a color palette generator or like a color picker specifically for developers. So you can just grab a color palette that you know is going to look at least 95% of the way there. You could still adjust it later and it'll get you something that looks pretty good and you'll be able to just run with it. So super high level overview. You can see you have a bunch of colors here. We'll kind of circle back to those, but down here at the bottom, you can click preview and you're going to get something very similar to what you saw on the last website. So this is all of the same colors that you've picked all visualized on like a real dashboard. So for me, a little bit more useful having this be the default because I'm building stuff that's more like a dashboard normally, maybe like a SaaS app or something like that and not necessarily landing pages as much. You can also export similar to any of the other tools. You can come in here, CSS, SCSS, Toend, Figma, blah, 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 and click your different color modes. But more importantly, here's actually kind of how I made this work. So for your primary color, you're gonna have to just kind of pick something that you like. So we'll say like this blue works well for me. Now below this, we're gonna see we have our primary color and this is the hex code. And then we have a content color. So these content colors are the color of text that you're gonna go, that you can put on top of the primary color, that'll give you some kind of contrast. So that's an example of that would be down here at the bottom, like this preview button. Then you're also gonna get a light and a dark version of that for like active states. So like hover and when you're pressing on something, so you can also visualize that down here at the bottom. For your secondary color, I'm actually not even allowing you, at least for now, to even pick a different color. I'm just keeping the same hue and saturation or not the hue technically, but the same saturation and lightness as your primary color. And then you can just rotate around that. So if you look at something like the Adobe color wheel, you can kind of rotate around the center to pick another color so you know it's at least 
some level of relative to your primary color. So if I went something like 180 degrees from my other color, you could pick that as your secondary color. Now, for any of you guys who know a little bit more about colors, maybe this isn't always going to work exactly how you want it to. So you might want to tweak it a little bit outside of this. Um, but if I was building something for designers first who kind of knew the difference about how you should handle lightness and stuff like that, you would just go and use one of these other tools. So again, that's why I built this the way that it is. Down here in your neutrals palette, so this is going to be like your foreground and background colors. So like if I click preview again, like your background back here and foreground for like cards and stuff like that and then your borders, and then a couple of different text colors that you can use. So like a primary kind of text color and then some lighter versions for like subheadings and stuff like that. And then what I've done over here for these is just added this little slider that lets you saturate the grays palette with a little bit of your primary color. So you'll see if it's all the way over here on the left, it's just gonna be completely gray. And then as you drag it over to the right, you'll see it turns a little bit more into something closer to like our primary color. So. This may or may not look good. We'll give this a shot. Oh, actually, yeah, it looks pretty good. So you see, as I drag, drag that over, you have a little bit more saturation in the background colors and like the border colors and stuff. You can then also opt to toggle to dark mode. So if you want to use dark mode, just click on that. And then we can take a look at what that looks like. And finally, you just have your utility palette. So this is stuff for like success, warning, error is the way that I named them. The contents are going to be the same as the others. So these are just colors that should look good on top of these background colors. And some examples of that, if I look over here, would be like in this little graph over here. So like, hey, this thing is going up. It's getting better. That's green. This thing is like starting to go down a little bit. That's yellow. It's like, oh, this is a really bad sign. It's red. And the idea is that all of these colors, when tacked together, should give you a really good starting point. Maybe not always a perfect starting point. Again, you can probably take these and tweak them over time. But a spot that you can kind of start and have something that's going to look, you know, 95% as good as you need it to look to actually build something and then adjust as you go. A couple of other random little things. So you can just randomize palettes down here at the bottom. You'll see if I just keep randomizing, it's always not going to give you something that looks amazing. You can definitely generate palettes that don't look perfect. So like maybe if you get a lighter color, oh, that actually would have been a good example. Let's see. And I'll just pick one. So maybe you had like a lighter color, like something like this. Maybe that's not going to look as fantastic. You can kind of use, actually that looks all right, but you can kind of use your own judgment as to whether or not this is going to be super Super accessible. I'm not doing anything like um, accessibility checks on the different colors and stuff like that. I've also added some examples that are just color palettes down here. If you click the examples button down here, that are examples from other websites. They're not going to be one to one perfect, but at least the color relationships should be pretty close. So if I picked something like, I don't know, stripe, you're going to get something like the primary color of stripe about how far off the secondary color is. So now if I go and I change the primary color to say, maybe something like that or something like that. It's going to keep that same relationship with the secondary color. And then you can go and hit preview and see what that looks like on an actual website. And that is pretty much it. If this is any level of useful for you, I would massively appreciate a like and a subscribe on the video. Help support me to just continue making stuff like this. And uh, I think that's gonna be it for this one. So I will see you guys next time. Peace.